So let's turn our attention to the fetal circulation, which in some ways is the direct opposite of the actual um, adult circulation. So in the fetal circulation, the key thing is the placenta. This is where uh, this is the organ for gas exchange for fetuses, not the lungs. And this is the mother's placenta note. So this is the mother's placenta, and this is the fetus's circulation. Okay. And the reason why the placenta is the location of gas exchange and not the lungs is first, the fetal lungs are not capable of respiration until week 25. They're still developing. And even after that, the fetuses have a very high pulmonary vascular resistance. Their, all their, lung, all their uh, blood vessels in the lungs are all scrunched up, and so it's very hard for blood to flow through them. So deoxygenated blood coming from the veins will be diverted from the pulmonary artery. Remember, they go from the veins to the right side of the heart to the pulmonary artery. They're going to be um, diverted to the aorta through the ductus arteriosus. So that's ductus arteriosus. It makes total sense because it... Sorry, let me go back. Because it connects the pulmonary artery and the aorta. Then it's going to go down the aorta, as you can see here. So this is our ductus arteriosus, taken from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. It's going to go down the aorta, it's going to split, and eventually it's going to go to the umbilical veins. So there's two umbilical, I'm sorry, umbilical arteries, and there's two umbilical arteries, as you can see, because they come from the branches of the aorta. And the two umbilical arteries will go to the placenta for gas exchange to retrieve oxygen. So umbilical arteries. I want to point out one key thing is that in the fetus, much the umbilical arteries carry a lot of low oxygenated blood. Okay. It's not super low, but it's not super high like you would normally expect in humans where humans have oxygenated blood in the arteries. In contrast, at least the umbilical arteries have low oxygenated blood, and umbilical veins have the oxygenated blood because the arteries to go to the placenta to get, get oxygen. And you see this big fat red thing? This is the vein, umbilical vein, which is confusing because usually when you see red a red vessel, you think it's an artery. But this umbilical vein returns this oxygenated blood to the fetus via the IVC. It's going to connect to the IVC. So there's three shunts to know about in the fetal circulation. Um, the first one is from the umbilical veins, and it's going to bypass the hepatic circulation, and that is through what shunt? That is through the ductus venosus. Again, that makes sense because ductus venosus um, connects the veins in the inferior vena cava. And the reason why we have the shunt is because the liver, the hepatic circulation with the portal vein, portal vein system, that's like... It's like traffic. It's like sitting in traffic. It's very congested. And we want to get as much high oxygenated blood to the circuit system as much as possible. And we want to fast pass. So this ductus venosus is our fast pass. It's our carpool lane that's going to let us skip the portal venous circulation and go directly to the heart. Now what's going to happen when this oxygenated blood goes to the right atrium? Is it's actually going to go through another shunt. And this shunt is called the foramen ovale. And this foramen connects the left atrium and the right atrium and the left atrium. So as you can see here, this this when you can imagine as this shoots through, it, it's gonna keep going, and if there's a hole there, it's gonna go from the right atrium to the left atrium. Okay? That's what it's gonna do. It's gonna go to the left side of the heart now, and it's gonna go to the aorta. And the reason why we want to do this is because then it's gonna shoot out the aorta, as we're gonna see here now. And then it can go up all these branches. And these branches are going to take your nice oxygenated blood up into the brain. As well as to the heart. Your heart will also get this blood. So you, you want to get this oxygenated blood to the brain and to the heart. So that's why we have this foramen ovale. Finally, we have the ductus arteriosus, which we already talked about. And the reason why we need this is because we have deoxygenated blood coming from the SVC. Okay deoxygenated blood coming from the F SVC and this is going to go down and it's going to follow gravity it's going to follow the way that makes the most sense it's not going to go through that formula of valley because that doesn't make sense how is it going to just suddenly shift direction it's going to go down into the right ventricle it's going to go through the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery but remember you can't get 
um, that blood into the into the lungs because of that high resistance. So this deoxygenated blood is going to get shunted, and it's going to get shunted. You want to shunt it to the placenta. So how are you going to shunt it? You have to shunt it. Remember to through, to get to the placenta, you have to go through the aorta. So you're going to shunt it through this ductus arteriosus. It goes from the pulmonary arteries to through the ductus arteriosus into the aorta. So you're getting this deoxygenated blood through the aorta, and you're also note that you're going to skip all these branches. And remember these branches. You don't want you don't want this deoxygenated blood going up to the brain. So you're going to skip all these branches because this shunt is going to make you skip it all, and it's going to go straight down the descending aorta. And again, remember through the umbilical arteries to the placenta. So this is a beautiful thing. These shunts all make complete sense why we need them, and um, just, just fascinating how we have these shunts that do exactly what we need them to do. So at birth, we're going to have circulatory changes to make us more normal. So the first change that's going to happen is the baby's going to take a first breath. And when it takes a breath, the oxygen is going to fill up the lungs like a balloon. Everything's going to stretch out, including all the blood vessels of the lungs. And what happens to pulmonary vascular resistance if your blood vessels stretch out? Well, your radius is going to increase. And when your radius increases, your vascular resistance will decrease. It's going to be a lot easier for blood to go through those vessels. The second thing that happens is blood from the right side, right side of, heart of, of the heart will go to the lungs for oxygenation rather than the placenta. And because we have um, blood flowing through the lungs, and then the lungs is then going to drain into the left atrium, the left atrial pressure will now exceed the right atrial pressure. And another thing is the right atrial pressure will decrease because you have decreased umbilical vein flow. All that, all that venous flow is now diverted to the lungs instead of the placenta. So because of this, you have closure of the foraminal valley. I'm going to show this to you. Okay, This is prenatal when they still have a fetus, when they still have that foraminal valley. And because the right atrial pressure is greater than the left atrial pressure. So blood wants to go this way. Remember, blood wants to go down in pressure. It goes down the pressure gradient. So it's going to open and this like this septum primum opens like a, I don't know, like a trap door. And lets blood go through. But at birth, we talked about all these changes that are going to make the left atrium greater than the right atrium. And because of that, blood's going to want to go the other way. It's going to go down the pressure gradient. And when it does this, it kind of closes that trap door, as we see in this picture. And that's how your foramen valley closes. Finally, the last thing. We're going to have increases in oxygenation through your lungs, and you're going to have decreased prostaglandins from the placenta. And this, is called, this will cause... Closure of the ductus arteriosus and the, the ductus venosus. And the reason why is I, I focus on the prostaglandins. Because prostaglandins will normally... Let me see. Prostaglandin. Remember E1 and E2 keep the ductus arteriosus alive. That's what they do. They keep it patent. They keep it open. That's, that's, what, that's what this is. It stays open. So if your prostaglandins decrease due to that placental separation, then your ductus arteriosus will die. It will close off. Now the opposite will hold true. Let's say you have a you have someone not the opposite, but let's say you do have someone that for some reason their prostaglandins don't go down and they have a patent ductus arteriosus, which is a problem we'll talk about in a second. We have a treatment for that. All you have to do is decrease prostaglandin somehow, and the way we do that is with endomethacin. Do you, do you know what type of drug and what mechanism of action this is? This is an NSAID. It's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. What, it, what this does is it blocks prostaglandin production. Because that's an inflammatory um, molecule. So you block prostaglandin production. You decreased prostaglandins. And now you have nothing keeping that ductus arteriosus alive. So you can close that patent ductus arteriosus. So again, let me just summarize. Three circulatory changes at birth. Three main ones. One, you take a deep breath, you get decreased pulmonary vascular resistance. This in turn will lead to your closure of the um, foramen valley by changing the pressures in the left atrium and the right atrium. And finally, because of that decreased prostaglandin and that increase in oxygenation, you're going to get closure of your ductus arteriosus and your ductus venosus. So now you see that all three of our shunts, all three of our fetal shunts have now closed. So again, another very beautiful thing of how we transition from the fetal life to the um, non-fetal life. Now we're going to talk about congenital heart diseases.